Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest, as you can tell by the title. This is my bull python, and today I thought we could um, talk about snakes, some interesting facts about them. He's very curious today, which is good for the video. Um, this is Vasuki. He is a uh, Woma ball python. Um, Woma is his morph, which means the pattern on his scales and the color. He's a, a juvenile. He's about a foot and a half, maybe two feet long, and uh, he'll only get up to three feet, so um, these aren't huge snakes. Um, they are very docile. I've never been bitten by him. Um, they are non-venomous. They're constrictors, so... He does still get a little freaked out if I get too close to his head. Um, snakes are really interesting. I've always wanted one, um, but I haven't been able to have one until now. There are several different types of uh, snakes that are commonly kept as pets. Uh, ball pythons are one of the more common pet snakes, but um, there's also corn snakes, uh, king snakes, and milk snakes. Um, when I was growing up, I was always fascinated by dinosaurs. And so I thought to myself, okay, what is the most prehistoric animal I can have as a pet um, besides, you know, a bird, because birds are dinosaurs? And so my boyfriend and I settled on a snake, and we were originally going to get a king snake, um, but the juvenile king snakes can be a little bit uh, more difficult to handle than this guy is. You are very energetic today. He's usually not this, uh, this curious. Now, pythons and boas are actually the more um, primitive uh, family of snakes. I'm not going to show you because I don't think you'd like that, but um, ball pythons have vestigial legs called spurs. They're just these little claws um, near the back of the snake. Want to check out the camera? <laughs> um, they're also very easy to keep if you um, can maintain their humidity. And they don't have crazy humidity requirements like a rainbow boa would. Um, or any other kind of tropical snake. Um, he needs about 50 to 60 percent humidity and it's pretty pretty easy to maintain um, with the substrate that we have um, and what I do is I just mist his cage on occasion. 
ball pythons come in all sorts of interesting patterns and colors. Um, you know, he's a very beautiful black and kind of golden bronze color. Um, he's just shed a few days ago, so uh, he is very vibrant. Sorry if I'm not looking at the camera that much. Uh, I'm just trying to keep an eye on him because um, he does like to explore and they do like um, things like soft blankets and bedding. Um, and I have him on my bed right now, so um, he's very excited. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just give you guys some tips on if you want to keep a pet snake and uh, which pet snake might be uh, the right one for you. So as I mentioned before, um, with ball pythons, having the correct humidity is really important so that they can shed well. And he did a very good job last time. Um, it's supposed to come off all in one big piece, and that's what happened, and I'm very happy about that. Um, ball pythons, however, can uh, hunger strike sometimes, uh, meaning that they might go weeks or even months without eating, um, because they can be picky. But he is used to um, live rodents, and um, it's usually best to do um, frozen thawed uh, rodents for them. However, because he is used to them, and that's what his breeder fed him, that's what we uh, that's what we feed him. He hasn't had a problem um, with them, but. If you do get a pet snake, just if you're going to feed them live, um, make sure that you're watching them feed. Um, because the rodents can actually bite or scratch your snake and can do some, some damage, and so it's best to avoid that. Um, that's never happened with him. Um, but it's always best if you are going to be feeding live rodents, uh, just to keep an eye on it to make sure that um, the rodent isn't harming your snake. Um, and so when I say they're easy to take care of, um, they only need to be fed once a week. Um, and, you know, um, because of that, they only go to the bathroom about once every one to two weeks. And so it's really easy to um, just spot clean his cage when he does go to the bathroom. Um, that way, you know, um, we can keep the same substrate clean and, and keep it for longer. Um, as for initial costs of buying the snake, uh, it depends on where you go for a normal morph ball python, so just like a wild type. Um, not wild caught, but a wild type uh, ball python. Um, it's going to range anywhere from, I've heard as low as 25 to uh, about $60, depending on where you're living. I know some countries you can't have ball pythons, um, and you can only have indigenous reptiles, like um, in Australia, so you might not be able to always find one. But in the United States and uh, North America in general, they're very um, easy to find, and in the uh, UK. And as you can see, um, when you are handling your snake, it is best to um, just make sure that they're supported um, because falling can still hurt them. Uh, basically, their skeleton is their head, um, including their, their jaws, teeth, things like that. Um, and then 
The rest of their body is just spine and ribs. So it's very easy to um, fracture one of those ribs if they do fall. Um, so just be aware of that. It's not always going to uh, hurt your snake, but it's better not to drop them. Um, now, if you are looking for a snake where you don't have to um, miss their cage every day and um, make sure that their humidity is enough for them to shed, uh, king snakes, uh, corn snakes, and milk snakes would probably be a better option for you. They're still very docile. Um, around my arm like a little bracelet. Um, they are still very docile animals. Oh. Okay, buddy. Don't fall. <laughs> I still kind of have to guide him to make sure that he's um, not gonna hurt himself. Um, and king snakes, corn snakes, and milk snakes have the same um, feeding requirements as ball pythons. Uh, it just depends on the uh, size and age of your snake. Um, it kind of, you know, uh, dictates what size rodent you're going to feed them. So him, we feed him um, one adult mouse a week, and um, soon we're either going to have to move to juvenile rats or to adult mice um, once he gets a little bit bigger. Now I do have pet rats, um, however they are fully grown adults, um, which is a little bit too big for him. Um, He's never tried to attack them or anything. Um, not that we've gotten him close to them. We just don't want to risk anything. But I love ball pythons. They have the cutest little face. Um, in terms of their cage setup, um, they don't require a heat light or a heat lamp, um, but they do require an under tank heat pad. Um, it's best when they're this big to put them in a 20 gallon uh, enclosure. Um, and you need to provide them with a water dish as well as um, places to hide. They love hiding during the day. Um, and it's usually best to put one of those hides on the warm side and one of those hides on the cool side so um, they can regulate their body, their uh, body heat a little bit better because they are cold blooded. Another interesting thing about these snakes, um, and all snakes actually, is that there is some evidence that they evolved from um, these aquatic reptiles called mosasaurs. And so it kind of is like having a little dinosaur. Um, they do at least in my experience, he likes being handled um, because he likes to explore and he likes the uh, the exercise it gives him. Um, if you want me to go more in depth on other reptiles or um, you want me to do a cage tour, let me know. I can also do a video with my other pets, show you guys the rats. But until next time, uh, I'll just leave you with this.